Um, one of the um, one of the points that we we wanted to raise was about leadership role models for women. Um, the fact that obviously there are you know because of the issues that we have been outlining today, there aren't as many women in in positions to to lead and show how that you can um, you know progress a career in in that way. Um, Do you feel like the the, scenario, the situation is that there are enough people to inspire women at the at the moment? Do you think that women do feel inspired when they look in I, at I, women? I think I think for my girls, I struggle a little bit that potentially if they you know the the likes of um of you turn on YouTube or MTV and there's lots of lots of shaking and, and you know quite sexual activity going on on movie, movie music videos and I'm I'm not sure aspirationally that's necessarily where you know where it goes, but I, I think. I think amongst women, we sometimes have different views in ourselves. So that I, I personally chose, and it, it's absolutely a personal decision. I was building a career. I had my children. They both went into full-time childcare before they were six months. They were five months old. Um, I went back to work full-time. They do pre-breakfast club. They do school. They do after-school club. Monday to Friday, I work. S weekend, they have almost mind divided essentially we work a lot in the Premier League football world so that seeps into the evenings and if they'd stop moving the games around and keep them in one time <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been my decision to do now actually for some women that's not right because you know I've had a lot of women say to me well I didn't have my kids for someone else to bring them up uh, I'm going to bring them up and I respect that it's, it's what's right for me so I think underlying some of this as well and we have to acknowledge is that Yes, I can and hopefully be a, a leadership model. I've, I've worked for, you know, very hard and I would like to think that it was actually sometimes something Sue said to me a few years ago that, you know, if you get to the top, it's so important that you send the elevator down to get other people to help them come up as well. But if not everybody wants to get in that elevator, yeah. we shouldn't be there saying, yeah. you've got to come, you've got yeah. to come, because actually we do need flexibility. So are they being right counterproductive there, some of these? Role models it's that you're that's a culture about. though, isn't it? For me, I was, and I was in a very male dominated culture, and I think if I play it back, if I'm honest, if I didn't go back full time, my career would probably not have progressed as it did because actually it was a full time role. I was managing 500 odd people. I couldn't have, it wouldn't have worked. And I'd worked very hard to get there. I didn't want to let it go. Now, I'm not sure that's because I'm female. I just think it would have, that's the job and the role that it required, but it was a personal choice to go back. So, I think it's very hard and I think we have to be right to be leaders but I also think we have to respect that the way I've chosen to develop my career isn't necessarily right for everybody who has a family and I, I think it's, I, I'd like to think I, I could be aspirational but at the same time I wouldn't be dogged enough to say that's the way you have to do it if you want mm. to. Are we too blinkered in, in what we consider to be success? Yes, I think that Jonathan, is. you were going to yeah, say something. Well, I've, I've been itching to come back on something that Anna said. On, you see, and this is my excuse to shoehorn it back in. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anna effectively earlier said um, that um, if I was looking for motivation, most motivated, most ambitious, I, I'm actually risk, in a sense, recruiting in a in a almost a gender structured mindset to start with. Is that a fair fair summary of it? Uh, I think the, the way women are sometimes depict, depict might lead to consequences. Yeah, so, so um, and I, I absolutely 100% agree with that. So when I was... When I was... Even a fraction longer delay there before agreeing with me. Thanks. <laughs> but because actually I, I think the real challenge is we, we need... Um, so when I was saying that, in a sense I do think it was shorthand, I think one of the challenges is we have to reimagine what we mean by leadership, we have to reimagine what we mean by ambition and creativity, because actually that's where the, the what you describe as the pale male stale, that's where the, 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 a certain sector of power and influence has defined over a long time what is leadership, what is ambition, what is success, what is creativity and actually unless we break that you're you're not making uh, you're not going to get commercial advantage out of it as a as a business um, and and as females it's really hard to break it you know they're bigger and tougher and stronger and more aggressive and when you go to meetings and you go to stuff they'll go for you and, and that's how it is and a lot of women don't, just don't want to part with that they but don't want to it's not it's not their style it's not my style I've only just started being brave enough to talk about these things because my career is over and I've got my own business and it doesn't matter anymore. But I would never have said these things because I would never have got anywhere. Never. 
But that's where, that's the joys of smaller businesses. That's, yeah. that's the joy of saying, well, actually, um, you know, we, we see smaller businesses because there's tons in the UK, the numbers are growing, they're an important part of the economy, la, 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 la. Yeah, we know that. But actually, look at something like um, <laughs> the bio, biosciences. What you had is these monolithic giants which couldn't turn around, and the likes of Pfizer's kind of broke themselves up because they suddenly realized that um, unless five years down the line they had an, another Viagra in the pipeline, they would be, uh, their share price would plummet in five years' time. And, and they knew things like that. So they, they realized that actually breaking those ships up was smart and they would simply acquire an agile business that had something mm. rather th to have a more consistent pipeline. So they reimagined what a business looked like and the only way to do that was realize that they couldn't turn a tank around. So turn that around to smaller businesses, there's phenomenal advantages in being able to reimagine. Uh, so, so leadership is defined often in a very male way. Look at Parliament, for goodness sake. Um, at a strategy level, this is destroying all the closing comments that I had written down. It's just <laughs> <laughs> so, pretend this is in closing. The, the, um, if, if you look at Parliament, you've got, uh, we, we ought to strategically be reimagining uh, what is leadership. Tactically, there are things that should then be done. Uh, operationally and tactically, the stupid hours, the, the macho male culture could be addressed with dealing with PMQs, parliamentary question time, which is just, oh boys, it's bullshit. It's just an embarrassment. And, and to be a successful male in that environment, you just have to be uh, the pseudo man, uh, if, of that, which is just a ridiculous position. So actually, there are, there's a strategy you can have, which is reimagine what leadership is, reimagine culture, because culture is not fixed. Culture shifts. Uh, values can stay consistent, but culture moves by the, the agglomeration of who, who's part of it. Shift the culture, and there are tactical steps you can deploy. So in Parliament, getting rid of parliamentary question time, physically changing the layout, of the, the building, not bothering to you know, make that a museum or another Marriott or something like that, and actually have a building that would actually work mm. towards changing our, our culture would be more sensible. But so be strategy, tactics. I'd be interested Chris, Chris to, still to happens, though. I mean, we had a guy ring up the office quick. last year <laughs> who, who, who wanted to, to speak to one of our consultants. All of our male consultants were out. I was there. He said, oh, um, we haven't got any consultants here, but Sue's here. You know, she owns the company. She she can speak to you. To, is there a man there that I can speak to? Now that's last mm. year, mm. and he wouldn't speak to me because I'm not a chap. I mean, I own the company, and, and <laughs> so it's. <laughs> <laughs>